Welcome to the Morning Sanity Check, where we talk about the different pillars of resilience, spiritual, physical, social, and mental. Join us so we can talk about it, then be about it. Let the show begin. Good morning, good morning, everybody. Welcome to another Sanity Check. My name is Seth. And I'm Camille. And we're here to make sure that you are living your life straight and making sure that you're not going stone cold crazy. So, ladies and gentlemen, before I get into what I got going on, let's talk about you, Miss Camille, and, and and why you sound like you you got something up your nose, like you got a booger. Why you got a booger? <laughs> Stop. You know, I cannot smile that much yet. So um, for those of you who don't know, I had a surgery to correct my septum. So I had a deviated septum and enlarged turbinates. So they had to straighten my nose. Um, I didn't get plastic surgery, y'all. Okay. I didn't get plastic surgery, but they had to straighten my nose. So I have a, uh, a stint in my nose right now. And so I'm still kind of draining and everything. So I still can't move everything. So if I look a little, you know, kind of crazy today, y'all just bear with me, but we're going to get through it and we're going to have fun. Okay. Yes, we <laughs> are. And that's what I call some commitment. Because I'll tell you one thing, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, I would have shown enough <laughs> postpone it to, for another week. All right. Y'all not going to have me out here <laughs> looking crazy and face all out of line but good morning everybody good morning our family yeah. out there in kenya everyone that's around the world yes hey look give, let us know if you you know where you're at and, and if you are okay if everything is good make sure you share 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 this because we're going to be talking about friends yes how many of us have them for real Okay, how many of us have them? And listen, some of y'all think you got them, but they don't got you, if that makes sense. But before we go too deep into it, we got to take a second for our sponsors, all right? So y'all. Research shows aging people and people with medical conditions or disabilities stay healthier with social interactions. So the Providence Place Home Health community benefits the community by promoting mental health. It also helps clients transition from dependent living to becoming independent by using independent living training. Providence Place Focus is one-on-one -on -one support and our home-based alternatives to facility and hospital care. Give Providence Place Home Health a call at 314-736-1919 or send them an email at LLC at yahoo.com. Women of every culture, age, income level, and race can develop perinatal mood and anxiety disorders. Symptoms can appear at any time during pregnancy and within the first 12 months after childbirth. It is often one of the most challenging times for new moms, especially if it's the first baby. Strangely, we are given all the tools and resources to take care of our babies, but very little to nothing at all to better prepare us for postpartum. Where is the book, What to Expect Postpartum? Cater to Mom is filling this need by raising awareness of perinatal mental health. They provide monthly postpartum boxes curated to support moms postpartum and beyond. But most importantly, they are ensuring postpartum resources are included in their boxes so mom is better prepared for her postpartum journey. They also have Cater to Dad and Love Always gift boxes for those who have suffered miscarriage or stillbirth. Please visit www.catertomom.com for more information. Cater to Mom, catering to the needs of moms postpartum and beyond. Right, all right, all right. Welcome back, welcome back. So good morning, good morning, everyone. Welcome again. If this is your first time tuning in to the Sanity Check, we want to just welcome you, welcome you, welcome you. You could have woke or waking up anywhere in the world, hopefully in your own bed, but <laughs> you're here with us today. And if you're on Facebook, make sure you go to StreamYard.com forward slash Facebook so that we can get your comments and so we can post them so everybody else can see them and interact with you. But again, today we're going to talk about friends. How many of us have them? Okay. <laughs> yes. Listen, and look, we're not talking about your Facebook friends because trust me, I got uh, close to 5,000 of them. Okay. But I got a solid five. 
solid five. Okay. Yes, that's eight for five. I'm yeah. Tell you. <laughs> yeah. So, so Camille, you can start it off, right? So let's talk about the type of friends you need. Okay. So um, Aristotle puts it in a way. He says that there are friends, excuse me, you guys, of the good or people that bring value to you. Um, that's one type of friend or another person. Jeffrey says that it's a must have friend. Those are the friends that you have a mutual respect for, a mutual trust, love, honesty, people that add value to your life and that you also add value to their lives. Um, there's a mutual exchange of, you know, it's not too much take, not too much give, but you both at some point, you know, give and take. And we all know that we're at different points in our lives at different times. So you have to be, that friend knows when it's their time to give you know, and uh, they have to maybe give a little bit more in this time, but they also trust that uh, you will also give when they're in need. Mm -hmm. And it's not just a one-way friendship. Uh, those types of friends, I have a few of them. And uh, so we all kind of, this year I got them all together. And uh, so we had a little friend group and all connected, you know, through me or whatever. But these girls, I tell you, through thick and thin, I think the the shortest relationship is 15 years now. So between 15 and 24 plus years. Mm -hmm. And uh, I can call them for anything. We've been there for births of babies, weddings, divorces, uh, you know, vacations, the whole nine. Anytime we needed some something or, you know, support for something, they are always there no matter what. Yes. You call them for anything. Mm -hmm. And those are the types of friends that you absolutely have to have. And even when we went long periods of time uh, throughout where we didn't speak, we still knew that the moment somebody picked up the phone, that we would pick right back up where we left off. You know, there would be no hard feelings, no, oh, you ain't called me in a while, none of that. It's like we never missed a beat. And I think that everybody should have at least one or two of those friends. If you have more than two, you are extremely blessed. And I count myself extremely blessed. What about you, Seth? Um, well, let me see. I, I don't, well, take this out. I use the word friends loosely, but the act is very sacred to me, right? The individuals that I consider friends, true, true friends, they are brothers and sisters, seriously. And one in particular I can think of, this is my boy in, uh, in, in the military, his name's Eric. And he, we grew up together from high school and then, you know, uh, after high school and then even in the military. So I retired and now he's retiring next year. But what I can consider a friend, him as an example, is being able to recover. You understand? Being able to recover when life hits you and uppercuts you and you look back and, uh, you know, it's like the, the, the song, you know, lean on me. You got people that's always leaning on you, but when do you need to lean on someone else? And that individual that's there, that's how you know that that's a friend. You know, that's just one good example. Absolutely. So, but how about the friends you don't need, ladies and gentlemen? Now, now, now we so we're gonna be going through this today. And and if you know some folks like this, a good morning, good morning. Hey, well, listen, before. Oh, wait, hold on. Look at her. Uh, yeah. yeah. You're out of line because I was going to talk about you, but I'm going to get you in there. But, ladies and gentlemen, if you don't know, my scenery is kind of uh, different. different because I'm in Murfreesboro, Tennessee. Miss Kamara is about to be my new uh, sister. We just a sister now, right? That's my sister, right? So I'm down here in Tennessee about to get it in and go DJ form, right? Oh, in the wedding too. So we y'all going to see me in the tux looking like I'm somebody special. Y'all know I ain't nobody special, but we're going to make it look good, you know, right? But anyway, congratulations to them. Yes, friends you don't need. Yes, ma'am. Friends you don't need. Here, let, me, let me give you somebody that you don't need, okay? How about the complainer? Think about it, y'all. Think about that, that complainer. Think about that individual. Anytime, right? Anytime you have something going or, or they have something going on that's not right to them, they hit you up. Okay, and then they complain about it. Okay, whatever. 
But then when you got something going on, they're complaining about your stuff. <laughs> what is that? You know what I'm saying? Why are you bringing my, you know, why are you trying to kill my high? You get what I'm saying? So we have to stay cognizant of that type of energy, right? We have individuals that's like that. What about you, Camille? You, you have those type of folks. Well, I used to. I don't anymore. Hey, no. uh, <laughs> narrow my circle. But I'm, I'm going to say, I. Uh, we always hear fair weather friends, right? Mm -hmm. People that are, that are there when times are good. But there's also a foul weather friend. Oh, the friends that are there when things friend. are bad, which is kind of what you're talking about. They always complain. You know, if things are not going right, then that's mm -hmm. when they want to show up. Because what do they say? Misery loves company, right? Mm -hmm. I don't want no foul weather friends. Yeah. <laughs> you know yeah. what I mean? I don't want any foul we weather friends. But yes, I used to have foul weather friends or people that would complain all the time. And it they just could never see the, the light of anything. It was always, oh, this ain't going right. This ain't going right. And then if something was going right with me, it was complaining about that too. Are you sure this? Are you sure that? How did you detach from that fine weather friend? Because just, some folks may be going through this right now and they don't know how to <laughs> maneuver a way to be happy for themselves. So there was there was a couple things. So one time I had to um, have the conversation and say, look, you know, every time you it just brings me down, like your energy is just so heavy. Like, you know, I don't I, I love you, but like I can't be around that all the time. And so I tried to have a soft conversation. It didn't really go. And so then finally, I just kind of started separating myself slowly, you know, and I was speaking everything like that, called a check in every now and then. But I created distance between us. And so over the time, it just kind of and then finally, you know, when I tried to go back and everything, it was the same stuff. And I just had to say, you know what? <laughs> and I just completely I won't say completely, but they might hear from me once a year. Mm -hmm. um, but I had to sever those ties because that energy was so heavy and deadening that I just was like, every time I feel like I'm just like, you know, you leave somewhere and you just like, man, I feel like I got hit by a Mack truck and I didn't even go nowhere. All I had was a conversation. Mm -hmm. And so I had to, um, again, protect my peace and I had to create space. I had a conversation, created space and then severed the relationship. Right essentially. On. Yeah. Right. Okay. Yes. Everybody protect your peace. Because listen, just like your life, you only get one of these. Only get you one. You know what I'm saying? So how long do you plan on putting yourself in that situation? Because essentially that's what you're doing. Anything that you allow to happen that you don't like, you're you're still allowing that to happen. So you have to recognize when that's a space that you don't want to operate in. You yes. get what I'm saying? And it, that's the, yeah, that's it. All right, Camille, what you got for a, a friend that you must have? <laughs> must have. So another one that I heard was, it's called a trust friend. All right. Trust friend. So okay. trust friend. Um, and those are friends that you can trust with uh, certain situations. You know, like they say, you can't tell everybody everything. My mom used to say that to me. You know, even if you have a best friend, you can't tell everybody everything because everybody is not really ready to handle some of the things that you yes. have going on. Mm -hmm. So um, you have to have different types of friends. But a trust friend is one that you can give some of those really, really intimate details to or those um, really personal things to. You know that they're not going to tell anybody, not going to go anywhere and spread rumors about you and everything. They may not necessarily be in your closest circle of friends, mm -hmm. but you can trust them with information. It's that type yeah. of person that you know is going to hold on to it or whatever. So I think that everybody needs trust friends. You oh. know, no matter what you're going through it, like I said, you might not be in my circle. We might not hang out all the time. However, I know that when I give you a piece of information, it's going to stay between you and I. Mm -hmm. And some of our some of our best friends, we can't do that because, you know, some of them can't hold water. Yeah. <laughs> you know? yeah. We love them and they're in our inner circles and they're like brothers and sisters and everything. But, you know, what you can't tell. Like my sister, I love you if you don't hear watching. Um, She's talking they, about you <laughs> right now. And it's live and they're going to hear it on every podcast. <laughs> you're about to talk about your sister. You out of line right now. Ladies but they already ready. know. She's about to be out of line. Everybody, it is public knowledge mm -hmm. that one of my sisters can't hold water because mm -hmm. everybody in my family we laugh and be like, Shh, Don't tell so and so, I told you, Shh, don't tell, and then it get all the way back around the circle. We'd already known, mm -hmm. but 
some of our best friends and our sisters and things like that. We cannot trust them to uh, hold certain details. Mm -hmm. uh, so we have to have a trust friend or yeah. like my mom says, an accountability partner mm -hmm. that you can share those things with. And you know that they're not going to go any further than you. Mm -hmm. you so, yeah. <laughs> what about you? You got some trust friends? You know what? I, 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 I do. I do. And and so this is the Herm, okay? <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, let me tell you something about Herm. First of all, he's crazy as a Betsy bug, like myself. But the deal is, I have many, I won't say many, but I have trust friends in categories. You get what I'm saying? So I consider them like building friends, meaning I know I can trust Herm when it comes down to my my, uh, you know, my, I'm, I'm squirrely, you know, kind of like you, right? I'm squirrely. I, I reach out to you and I say, hey, this is what I'm thinking about. Boo, 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 boo. You won't take everything that I'm saying literal, but you can help connect the dots. So when I'm talking to Herm, he gives me that. It's like that, 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 that extra mind. Uh -huh. you, you get what I mean? Like, yo, I see that. How about this? And then how about that? It's this is difference, and now we're going to flip it, right? Because you have those build friends yes. like Herm, like you, and like other individuals that I consider friends. But then, ladies and gentlemen, wait before we go into this, I just want to make sure if y'all just tuning in, make sure that you go to Streamyard if you're on Facebook, so that your comments can pop up on here, so we can make sure that y'all are uh, here and we can show you all that love, right? And so today we're talking about friends, how many of us have them and what type of friends you have. Right. So we're going to touch a little bit on type of friends that you need and the ones you don't need. OK, so I just talked a little bit about building friends, but you got to watch out some of those folks you can't build with. You know why, ladies and gentlemen, do you know why you can't build with them? Because, see, they watch you build. And they really don't input, give any output. But when it's time to, to, to show up, they there. You dig it? Give me two seconds, right? This is how we're going to do it. It's something, and, and, and Camille, I know you got this one, but um, we talked about this. This is the cornbread analogy, okay? <laughs> this lady wanted to make some cornbread. And she talked to her friends, like, hey, friends. They said, hey, friend, I want to make some cornbread. Everybody like, yes, let's get some cornbread. Y'all know y'all like cornbread. Everybody like cornbread. So she said, okay, well, this is all I need. I need this ingredient, ingredients. I need the flour and hey, some jiffy, right? You get the jiffy, put a little sugar up in there or whatever. So she asked them all, hey, I need help with these ingredients. Uh, her friends, uh, you know what? I got this to do. Uh, not now. She said, okay, cool. I'll go and get it. She went to go get the ingredients. And they come back around. Hey, what's going on? I'm still making that cornbread. And she's oh, okay, the friends. Oh, okay. Well, look, I need y'all help. Y'all want to help uh, get the bowls and everything together? Mm, you know what? I got to go walk my fish. Oh, you know what? I got to take my dog to therapy. <laughs> Boom, everybody gone. But now, when that cornbread is done and on the on the on the windowsill, you know, in the back in the old days, let it chill a little bit. Everybody smell that cornbread. Hey. I smell that cornbread, her friends say. Is it time now? Come on now. We you know y'all got those friends, right? Now hey, they smell your cornbread. Now they want some. Come here, what you know about that? Look, I know all about that. <laughs> I know all about that. Those people that just want to be around when things are good. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. When everything is already done. They don't want to put in the work. They don't want to go with you through all the hard times and the sacrifice, but they want to all of a sudden attach to you as soon as they see, you know, the end result or, you know, where you're going or something now all of a sudden. But when I was asking you for help back then, you know what I mean? Just a little support or something like that. You was like, ah, nah, I'm going to go over here and do this. Oh, I'm going to go buy from this person. Mm. Oh, I'm going to do this and this and that. And then now all of a sudden it's like, oh, that's my girl. Well, where was you when I needed you the most? You yeah. know, where was you when all those other friends that helped me build, like the Chelsea's, the Noni's, the Keisha's, we used to have family dinners. I'm going to tell you this quick story. Mm -hmm. So we was broke airmen, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Young, had babies, couple of us and everything like that. Well, we were poor, you know, <laughs> back then our checks were so much smaller than they are now. So you know, had this little babies and everything. And there was times I remember I used to call and I'm like, all right, y'all, I ain't got no food. Like, 
I got a box of cornbread, the Jiffy cornbread. Call Nodi. Nodi be like, <laughs> I got a six pack of chicken. <laughs> you know, call Chelsea. Chelsea be like, girl, I got some green beans or a box of macaroni. Right, and right. We have family dinners. We mm -hmm. would come together at somebody's house. We would put together these little bit of ingredients and we would sit down and have a meal as a family. Mm -hmm. And those are the ones that are still with me today, See? you know, that help build and then they're building their own as well. Yeah. But it was just the support that no matter what, you know what I mean? <laughs> Broke as we were, we was coming together and trying to make something out of nothing. Humble because we all, yes. And we mm -hmm. all knew that we had potential to do more. You know, yeah, I could have had some cornbread or she could have had some chicken or she could have had, you know, some macaroni or some green beans. But how much better would it be when we come together and make a whole meal? You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And so those are my friends that I built with that, you know, started from nothing, started from the bottom. Now we're here, you and know, the key too. <laughs> that is the key because yeah. with those individuals that it's like, yo, hey, I really, you know, would love this. And even if they can't contribute the way you think, maybe they can contribute the best way that they can. But look at Jay Will. So he says devil's advocate. Yo, shout out to Jay. He always mixing the bowl. Right. But he said. Is it their fault or yours because you labeled them as a friend, which now have uh, have expectations of them? You know what? You're right. Uh -huh. So th that's the deal. That's the deal. But but you know, let, let, let's be completely honest, ladies and gentlemen. We fall into relationships, right, with our own expectations. But then we see something that an individual portray. Okay. Now, it's our responsibility to take note and say, you know what? Okay, this person shown me this, this type of track record. So this is a friend to this level. Now, when it comes down to this, I'm straight. You see what I'm saying? It's our fault if we keep putting that friend in a situation that they don't fit. Hey, if it don't fit. You must have quit. Oh, I'll go and I'll go say they ain't it. Okay, but oh. hey, whatever. Hey, it rhymes. Whatever. Either way, either way, same thing. You know what I'm saying? So it is our responsibility. Hey, Sims, yeah. So I was gonna say that. Um, I'll go back to Aristotle. He talks yeah. about different types of friends, you know, mm -hmm. friends of utility, those that are there to help you with certain things, you know what I'm saying. We talked mm -hmm. about the friends of the good. And we also talked about there's friends of pleasure that, you know, you might have a common interest with. We also have different levels of those. So you have associates, you have people who are there for specific reasons. And I think because we're not aware, I think that we are aware uh, but we don't really understand that there are so many different levels and categories of friends that you could put people in yeah. that we think of friend because, you know, as we're growing up, we just like, oh, this is my best friend. This is my this and this and that. And this is what we've we hear about people. Mm -hmm. But when you actually look into friends, all the different categories that you could put people in, I think that once you're aware of that, then we can better uh, manage our emotions in terms of who is a friend or who is not and where we're going to invest and knowing the different categories that they, they should be in. in like my, friend, yeah. my friend that I see at the game all the time, that's, you know, maybe uh, my daughter's mother, friend's mother, you know, that I mm -hmm. see every time she's just, you know, an acquaintance that I see at the thing. She is a friend of convenience. You know what I'm saying? She's there at the game. Hey, but our relationship is not going to go any further than when we see each other at the games. Right. And so we may sit there and chop it up all the time and have a great time. And I'm like, oh yeah, that's my friend or whatever. But I know that that's as far as it's going to go. Right. You know what I mean? And then uh, one thing I'll, I'll say this too, the associates, you have to know how far to let them into your your circle or whether you want to or not. Some mm -hmm. people confuse those associates. I associate with you every day at work. So all of a sudden I'm feeling like, oh, I might need to invite. No, you don't have to invite them to your mm -hmm. house. That, you that, that's a work friend. That's a work friend. And friend, it's okay yeah. to categorize them and mm -hmm. keep them as a work friend. Mm -hmm. You know, you don't have to always bring, try to bring everyone into your circle. You have to know where to put them. So what about you, Seth? You know what? Um, I don't. Yeah, it, it, it's taken time because like you said, when we grow up, we think that everybody we cool with, ladies and gentlemen, we think everybody we cool with is cool with us. Yes. Oh, darn it. We think all, all of the individuals that we're best friends to 
are best friends to us, and that's not the case. You understand? Look at those the individuals that may not be able to give what you give, but they're able to give what they have. That's the key. That is the key. So think about that. Think about that. So it, it, it's hard. It's hard to kind of um to 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 know the you know the, the to know the the ways of you know I guess maneuvering in the friendship or whatever. But what we're going to talk about real quick is a friend that you don't need to have. Okay, the friend that you don't need to have is the let's call them the one upper okay you got your one upper friend whatever it is that you're doing they say oh yeah that's what's up i did that two years ago like damn word you get what i'm saying what do you what what type of energy does that do for you you know what what type of energy does that create or they're they're constantly constantly bragging i got this i got that i got this i got that i got that that is not the type of friend that you need, right? Because you almost feel as though your friendship is a competition. And that's not it. It's like, yo, we all can eat. What are you doing? You get what I'm saying? Listen, watch this. If I'm going to uh, Tennessee, right? I'm going to Tennessee. I'm just minding my business, going to Tennessee, doing what I got to do. Like, hey, yo, yeah, boom, boom, boom. This is what I'm doing. Like, oh, okay, yeah, I went there last year, but I'm over in Vegas now. <laughs> no, like what? No, no. <laughs> but you get what I'm saying? What do you think about that, Camille? Absolutely. You know, and I think that people don't here's the thing about those kind of friends, the one uppers. I don't know mm-hmm. that they always think that they're or realize that they're one uppers. I mm-hmm. think that they're trying to find a common ground to say, like, you know, yeah, but <laughs> they're always still in somebody's thunder. You know what I'm right. saying? And it's like, okay, you've been around the world and back. I get it. Right. But, you know, let me just just kind of, you know, revel in this moment and just mm-hmm. tell you about my thing. But there are some people who are constantly in competition and those, can, you know, that kind of falls under the the toxic friends. You know what I'm saying? When they're constantly competing with you yes. on every level, mm-hmm. on everything, everything has to be about them. They always shift it back to them. You mm-hmm. know, it's never a time where you can share who you are and what your accomplishments are without them saying, oh, yeah, I did that 10 years ago. Mm-hmm. You know, I was watching a while and out one time and a girl... <laughs> It's so funny. The girl was like, yeah, that's right. They paid me a million dollars. They put a million dollars in my bank account. I got a million dollars right now. He was like, yeah, I did that 10 years ago. Mm-hmm. <laughs> she was See? like, oh, you right, know. Right, right, right. But she was trying to compete on a level that she wasn't at. That's another thing. <laughs> yes. <Hey>. So, <laughs> so sometimes so we got to know who you who you competing with because you might say something out of pocket and then you get checked and embarrassed and then you, now you mm-hmm. mad at that person when you right. were trying to do the same thing. Right. But right. yes, it so, goes both ways. Yes, it does. It goes both ways. And so that, that's the deal. So <laughs> you need to ain't no when to cut them off, especially when they are either consciously, and I'm not going to say it's it's subconsciously, but they are consciously trying to position themselves above you. And if you know, wait a minute, this person is really celebrating and continuously talking about this new car that is not new. You get what I'm saying? And this is their first car. So we can uh, celebrate with them but we have to be cognizant of when that celebration becomes toxic. Yes. I'm telling you, y'all, it can become toxic because if you want to share good news and an individual shuts down your good news because they want to give you something that may not even be relevant, but just let you know how relevant they are. You get what I'm saying? So it's like, It, it, it is different. It is different. But that's talking about them. All right, Camille, as far as big, well, good uh, friends to have. Wait, hold on, y'all. Listen, I'm, I'm looking at these comments. <laughs> All right. Depend on the relationship you have with that person, because sometimes you need that person to keep you hungry, uh, humble and hungry. Absolutely. But at the same time, it, in my opinion, in my humble opinion, it needs to be a a fair exchange. You know what I'm saying? A friendship is give and take, not take, 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 take. 
Yes. You right? Because uh, so I need to be able to see you and build, and then you be able to see me and build. But we're building off of each other's energy, not off of each other's work. Yes. You, if if that makes sense, right? So the the bricks that I'm laying is not for you to just walk on and then leave me there standing. I need some bricks to walk on as well. Other than that, it's only gonna be a one-sided friendship. So we need to stay, you know, we need to keep our mind, you know, on that level. And the other thing too with that is that, yes, you want somebody to help you stay hungry and, and humble, but if it's just about the competition or, you know, chasing, is it really a friendship? What is that really built on? Is there that mutual exchange or is it just, I'm trying to be better than this person or, you know what I'm saying, chasing after? So we have to be very, um, cognizant of our intention as well, because we're talking about friends that we need and don't need, but we also need to talk about the friends that we are to other people as well. So as we're talking about that, you know, we have those friends that are constantly doing and we're trying, trying, trying. But what I see is a lot of people will start competing in a, in a very negative and toxic way with their own friends, you know, and then it changes the dynamic because, Again, the intention. Yeah, I, I wanted to get where you are, but now it's it's turned into something else. You know what I'm saying? And so we have to be very cognizant of how far we allow that to go. So stay hungry and humble. Yes. But at the same time, you have to check your intention as well and make sure that you're still, you know, what I'm saying uh, doing it for the right reasons. Well, look, tell me what you think. And, and I agree. Tell me what you think about this. Sometimes we have hourglass friends. We're at the top when the sand is flipped up. As time goes, we pour into them. And once we're done, we're empty because we poured everything into them. But when it comes to them, uh, they don't want to flip that glass. So they don't pour anything into us. I'm like that, like that's like air. You really don't see. Oh, OK. I'm like air. Uh, you really don't see me, but you feel me and me in your life when you need me. Air, not wind, because wind can be destructive if out of control. Um, I agree. And, and I think that's where we have to really pay attention to, again, that give and take. You know, if you're always giving, 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 and that other person is not willing to do the same thing for you, are you really their friend? Again, we talked about that last week. You know, sometimes People are our friends, but we're not their friends or, you know, our best friends. But so they're pouring into other people because we have categorized them as a best friend to us. Right. But we have not ensured that that title or that feeling is reciprocal or mutual. Mm -hmm. And so we may look at it as if they're not pouring into me, I'm pouring. But they have you in a totally different category than you have them. In. It's OK, of course, <laughs> but in a totally different category, you know, so you have to be uh, very aware of that, too, that just because you are somebody's friend or they're your best friend doesn't mean that you are their best friend mm -hmm. or that you're their friend at all. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So make sure you're pouring into somebody who is able to and willing to pour into you as well. There has to be that mutual uh, exchange and mutual kind of playing field. And sometimes that takes communication. And unfortunately, we don't talk about that with our friends. We don't. We assume. We assume, <laughs> we right. assume. We assume that, oh, they get it. No, no, That's no, no. And you know, just like that, you know, the deal is friendships is like, it's a relationship. It is. Right? So you can be in a relationship with someone and you assume just because they've known you forever that they understand you. Yes. Listen, I'm not your mind reader. I'm here for you, but give me the tools I need to be a friend to you. Yes. Ladies and gentlemen, sometimes we put people in categories that they don't no. necessarily belong in, nor do they fit. Yes. So either we don't, well, either we expect certain things of people or we don't give them the right information so that they know what type of friend they can be. Yes. That's the difference. That's the difference. Just because y'all like the same music doesn't mean that y'all dance the same way. Yes. If that makes sense. So we have to be cognizant and, and know who it is that we are including in our circle. In our circle. And we'll you know, that causes so much rift, too, because I've been in a part of how we really looked at the definition of friendship. Um, no, I, I looked up the definition, I always do. Mm -hmm. um, and we'll talk about that in a second. But mm -hmm. um, I always see how friends fall out, right? You see, if there's a friend group, and I thought this was my friend, and now she's this person's friend, and I can't be her friend no more because mm -hmm. I thought she was my best friend. And yeah, yeah, because there's no 
no conversation about, you know, where we fit in. And some people think that when we say best friend, you can only have one best friend. Right. I got a bestest. I got a bestie. I got a best friend. I got a best friend. I got a sister. You know what I'm saying? And so, but we all know where we fit in each other's lives. There's no secret. There's no, so when we come together, we can come together like, hey, we are family. You know what I'm saying? We're all connected through whoever and we're a family, but I see so many people because we put them in categories they don't even want to be in, not just don't fit in or don't belong, but they don't even want to be in. And we try to put them in these categories and then we get our feelings hurt when we find out that there's another person or another friend or another whatever that's occupying that title in their life instead of yours. But we never had that conversation. You know, never had that at all um, to what's his name? I'm sorry. The one that said the, the definition definition of friendship is mm -hmm. really somebody that you have an intimate uh, connection to. There is something more than just a casual relationship uh, with that person. It's built on trust and honesty and respect. So there's different definitions. Most of them are very vague when it comes to friends. And that's because people label them however they see fit. Mm -hmm. uh, I looked up the Urban Dictionary too. It is talk about loyal loyalty, you know what I'm saying? And respect and honesty. And there's a mutual exchange of those it, yeah. uh, types of, um, mm -hmm. of characteristics. Mm -hmm. So, but people label, there's so many different types of friends and types of people friends and, you know, things like that, that it really is up to the people to define, but it really is a connection uh, and affection uh, that's a little bit more than just a casual relationship mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that's the basic definition of what a friend is. Okay. Good, good, good. What other friends should we have? That oh, we I didn't take it as a poke. I, was, I just saw that. Yeah, I didn't yeah, yeah, no, we got it. <laughs> yeah. What other friends should we have? So I think that everybody should have friends that you can just kind of hang out with. You know what I mean? That there is not so deep. So I have friends that um, I like to dance. I told you guys that I love the salsa. You know what I mean? And I've become close to some of those people, but I like friends that I can just go out and have fun with, that I can let my hair down. It doesn't have to be serious. It doesn't have to be on a deep level all the time. We don't have to be discussing politics and all that kind of stuff. We just go and have fun. So those friends of convenience or those friends of you know pleasure or whatever you want to call them, everybody needs to just be able to let their hair down and be them you know, enjoy a game together. Hey, I'll meet you over at Buffalo Wild Wings or Wild Wings or whatever you want to call it. And we, we'll catch a game together because we have a mutual um, interest in this thing, you know, and I know that you're going to go in when we go to the game and I'm not the only one. I know I'm not the only mother that gets kicked out of all the games, you know, with the kids and stuff and Blue tell you to go and sit down over there. I know I'm not the only mother, so I need another mother like that, you know, like mm -hmm. me that's going to be out there riding for these kids too. So somebody that you could just go and have fun with. Yes. Does not have to be deep. Doesn't have to be super spiritual. It doesn't have to be super whatever. But mm -hmm. just go and let your yes, mom, social friends mm -hmm. yeah. people that you can just go and have fun with that yeah. have a mutual interest. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yes. and you know I got those type of friends, and it's good when you have the fr the best friend. In my opinion, is the type of friend that can fit in more than one category. Categories. You get what I'm saying? So you my turn up. Friend, and then you also my business mind friend. Like, yo, okay, cool. Look, we go get it in tonight, but tomorrow we go talk about this business. Right on, right on. Boom, oh, drink, drink. You feel me? <laughs> yes. But if you got to uh, go back and forth, all right. Look, I'm gonna holler at you Friday because I only got time on Friday for you. Yes. That kind of, you know what I mean? That that would make people feel away, right? You 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 have to understand that, right? To know oneself would determine your circle of friends. Absolutely, absolutely. absolutely. Yeah. So. Watch this, ladies and gentlemen. Well, before we go into it, let us know where you're at. Give us hashtag your state or your country. We got some people in here from Africa. Shout out to y'all. We got individuals from Texas, right? Yes. Back in Illinois, from Detroit, getting it in. I love y'all, right? We having a good time, real good time. We're talking about friends. How many of us have them? For real, for real, okay? The good friends, the friends that we need, and the ones that kind of need to take a back seat. This is the sanity check. So chances are, if you're watching this, you're not completely 
crazy, but we're trying to give you some things to think about because we have things inside of us that makes us think like, oh, am I a friend or are they really being a friend right now? Shout out to you, of course. Look, that's a long mentor of mine and made it over to Germany safe. So I appreciate y'all. So listen, y'all, we go get into this one. What do you know? What do you know about the the flaker? <laughs> Yo, okay. Now, now look. Now, now, now we're gonna talk about the wow. not just the flaker that. Hey, I'm ready to go out. Yeah, me too. You ready? I'm ready. Be ready in ten minutes, and you know damn well your ten minutes. You still in the bed? You still got your bonnet on? You ain't going nowhere. You know you ain't going nowhere. You, know you ain't even trying to go nowhere, but. Yeah. Not that, not just that type of flaker. Yes. The type of flaker when you are out having a good time, trying to have a good time with them, they like they with you, but they always like this. They always on their phone, or they. Uh, ooh, I don't know what that is, but they open their phone and they're facing. You know, they're yeah. more connected to social media than they are with the me. You get what I mean? So yeah. this is the type of flaky friend that put more importance on other individuals' um, perception of them instead of enjoying the time that we have together because now I don't feel important anymore. Why did you call me out here if you go be on your damn snap, snap rap? What is it? Snappy? Snapchat. 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 Whatever. I'm old. Whatever. But still, you got that, you're on the Instagram, boom, 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 whatever the case it is, but we can't really kick it no more. Now, what you think about that? I, I just don't like those kind of friends. Mom said flakers. <laughs> yeah, yeah I, I don't really like those. I mean, I like to go out when it's, it's us. You know, I don't mind when people are on their phone and everything, but I just, the ones that constantly, and they just all, and that's all you see, I'm just like, be in the moment, like, Let's just have fun together. Let's people watch. You know, I like the people watch. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, mm -hmm. let's people watch. Let's, mm -hmm. you know, enjoy the music, do something. You know, I, I just don't, and I don't go out a lot anymore. And like I said, I go, I like to, to, you know, Latin dance. So I, it's a lot of dancing that goes on there, which I enjoy. Um, but I just don't like that. I'm not that type of person. Everything has to be on a, you know, selfie when I'm out and constantly all this and all that. I'm not that type of person. If I ask you out, I'm like taking myself out of something. And so I want to enjoy your company. You know what I'm saying? I want to enjoy your company. But I also have flaky friends that even when they do go out, they knew they didn't want to go out. They accept it. And then the whole time that they're there, they're just like, oh, I don't want to be here. Or they find an excuse to, to leave early. And then it just messes up your whole day. Oh, yeah. You know? So why you bring like, your born ass on out here anyway? Right. You know what I'm saying? Because what's happening is you go bring down the vibe of everybody. The whole vibe. And then, and then you know we're going to talk about you when you leave. Like, exactly. why you bring the food? You exactly. know what I'm saying? If they didn't want to come in, you don't do me no favors. Right. Because now that you're here, you don't really want to be here. And now I have to second guess the importance of the whole friendship. Yeah. And, and it's not just one time. One time I could get it, you know, because sometimes you go and you're just not feeling it. You know what I mean? It could be a game. It could be anything. But those people that constantly do that, and you're just like, why? You know what I'm saying? We all have our bad days, but I've learned that happened to me several times. So I, people that know me, I always drive my own car. And I said, because I can stay as long as I want to, I can leave when I want to. And nobody has to, you know, stop anything for me. I'm out deuces. If anybody want to roll early, which sometimes that happens, we'll go with a group of people. I'll go by myself. And then if I wanted to leave, I'll say, hey, if anybody is ready to go, you know, you're welcome to come with me. I usually have and we do a swap or if some people came with me, we'll do a swap of people, those who want to stay and those who want to leave. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, so that creates no no kind of tension there. Mm -hmm. But that was born out of that, you know, people. People that you want to go out and spend all my money and now all of a sudden you want to leave all the time i'm not wasting my money you find your own transportation i'm gonna drive mine i'm gonna stay as long as i want to or leave whenever i want to and that saves the friendship <laughs> you know what i'm saying because now we're on the same we know where we're at well, that's you the know, yeah, that's the conversation. Yeah. So people know, yo, Camille's going, she's going to drive and she's dipping whenever she's ready. 
No yeah. harm, you know, no, 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 you know, don't, don't put your heart around all of this. It's all good because we know her, right? Yes. This is what she do. And this is her energy. Mm -hmm. But it's those individuals that put out that negative energy. Yeah, of course, she says Latin dance. You know, you don't know how to dance. <laughs> but listen, so it's the ones that put out, yo, I'm there for the team, team player, boo, boo, boo. And then when they get there, they done, you know, they out, they're not connecting with folks. They acting, they acting funny style, right? They're not social. They're just sitting in the corner. They boo, 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 boo. You know what I mean? So you have to watch out who you consider friends and kind of like the same things. Some friends don't mix and you know that. I know that. Yes. What do you think about that, Camille? Absolutely, absolutely. Um, so, oh, of course, no. <laughs> what is wrong with you? Look, 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 you got something going on with a nose, bro. <laughs> I can't even laugh right. I'm sorry. No, Latin. I like to solve it. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Ladies so, and gentlemen, that did not just happen. She is not going to be on the sanity check and talking about freaking. Okay? No. <laughs> she lap dancing. Keep that in the closet. But anyway. Of course not. I'm through with you, okay? That's why I'm driving my own car. Okay? Right. I'm not with you. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> but anyway, uh, see, he got me messed all up. What was talking about? No, I'm talking about the friends that don't mix together. Oh, yes. Yes, that don't mm -hmm. mix. So I'm 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 not saying particular. I'm a really easygoing person. Mm -hmm. Um, and but I don't like the complainers. I don't like the flaky people. I don't like the people that don't know how to fun have fun. And so I'm kind of vocal when we go out. And I'm like, look, if you don't want to be here, then why'd you even come? You know what I mean? Like you putting a whole damper on this. And now everybody got an attitude trying to figure out, you know, is she okay? And you trying to be the center of attention and you acting all like just go home. You know what I mean? <laughs> Just go home. Yeah. And I went on a trip like that one time and the girl, you know, one of my friends invited her. I'm like, you know how I am. This girl comes and she didn't have to pay for nothing, did nothing. She was always complaining. I didn't go Ooh, on this trip. Okay. I'm yeah. sorry. I hate those. Listen, you're complaining. You ain't paying for nothing. Ain't she didn't pay for the ass money. Did you give her did she pay for an airline ticket? She didn't pay for the hotel. She didn't pay for the rental car. She didn't pay for the um the car. We had things that we had planned to do. And so we had mapped it out, had our money. She comes, didn't have to pay for anything. She gets in a hotel and she goes, I got first dip. First dip though. What excuse me? You didn't put a dollar on nothing. You got first dips. And so she puts my friend on the couch. I was mad for one. Hey, y'all, hold on, hold on, Camille. Ladies and gentlemen, if y'all just hearing this. Put in hashtag not my right. friend, not my friend, not my friend. Hashtag not my friend. Because listen, we don't operate like that in 2020. Look, 2020 might be crazy in the so many different ways, but we don't involve that type of energy. Go ahead, come right. Here. And so I'm just like, how do you not pay for anything and then think you got dibs on anything? You know what I'm saying? But I'm like, okay, that's your friend. You know, then I have to. That's your friend, and this is what we're gonna do. So we go out to eat. And we find this nice Italian restaurant. And, you know, me and her, we, we're ready because we've been planning this trip. The girl was like, oh, it's kind of expensive. And I was like, um, okay, you know, about $25 for an average plate. And she was like, oh, I ain't got that kind of money. So she sat there and ordered a side salad and a water. <laughs> So then we had to go. I'm sorry. Well, if you don't get your cheap, hold up. Listen, y'all. Hey, wait a minute. Listen. Right. You know exactly. It, is. it got it got worse. So then we were talking about we wanted to go to a um a seafood restaurant and everything. She was like, "Well, can we just go to Boston Market? Ah. It's right there." For I didn't come all the way out here to go to Boston Give Market. White castles. It, Give kept, <laughs> it kept going on and on. We had a concert and all these different things we were going through. And so I kept, you know, giving her money. Like, she was like, I don't have the money. And I'm thinking, you didn't bring nothing? And so finally, my friend got mad. And I was like, well, where'd she at? She was like, oh, she over there. And my friend goes into the venue. And I was like, what happened? I go to see the girl. She's like, well, I didn't have no money to go. And I was like, so my friend, her friend, left her out there. So I'm feeling bad. So I give her the, the money to get in. As soon as we get in there, she pulls out. A, it costs twenty dollars to get in. She pulls out a twenty dollar bill and pays for some food, but I'm you didn't have no I'm money. I'm in this live right now. I'm, in. I'm done. I'm done. I said, we ain't doing never, that. Well, I told my friend all this to say, I know it's it's crazy, and it, it didn't stop. But I said all that again. Never again will she ever go anywhere with us. I said, you know me, okay? You know me. How do you not? How
have to pay for anything. And then you still can't pay for anything. You should have <laughs> declined. You know, you should have declined. But I was so mad at that trip. And, you know, I laugh now or whatever. But I'm just like, not my friend ever. Not you my know, friend. Yeah, me and my friend, we'll go out and we'll go all over the world together. But she knows me. But exactly. She should have stayed at home. And that's what I told her. And I was so mad. Yeah, I was like, I'm not giving you another one. I dropped her off the ATM machine. I said, we're not leaving until you give me all my money back. And she was like, well, I don't have, well, you need to call your husband. Tell him to get no, damn it. Check it out. <laughs> Listen, she got the money. And if not, go find it. You see? But I said, we're not leaving until I get my money. And she right. got the money. That's a good point. So, ladies and gentlemen, we need but, to know. We need to know when we are yes. enabling. Yes. Okay? When we are truly enabling. So we talk about this often, right? We talk about protecting ourselves, protecting our peace, and protecting our energy. When you got a fool, okay? And I and y'all know me, I say fool a lot, but for fools, because <laughs> you got different levels of fool of them, okay? That's just made that up. But sometimes when you have that individual that you're catering to, and they get comfortable. Yes, they're going to keep receiving because you're you're continuing to give, yes. and then they're going to look at you sideways when you want something back. You get what I'm saying, or you want you want that that type of uh you know when when you want to return on that, and so it's extremely hard. It's extremely hard. It's really hard to have that conversation with people. However, it is most definitely necessary. It's most definitely necessary because they will continue to lead you to your dry. And then they don't care if you don't have anything else left. Okay. Yes, 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 yes. You got your money, good for you. But and listen, that's the deal. That's the deal. What what what, what are you doing? Listen, and you know where we're going. Okay, you know where we're going, you know what we need, and, and and you know what you need to have. All right. That's the right thing to do. Yes, 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 yes. You need your money. <laughs> oh, yeah, you need your money. And especially if you work for it, you ain't gonna play to just give it away. What you know it? What you doing? <laughs> yeah. But but my friends know who I am now. I mean, they know, you know, and so we have these conversations. Make sure if we're going somewhere, you know how I am, you know how the other person is. Make sure our personalities match. Make sure that they can do the things, you know, because ain't nobody going to ruin my vacation. You know, you and me have established a re relationship. And since that's your friend, it's up to you to make sure that we all met, you know, kind of mesh. You, you at least kind of vet the, the personalities a little bit. Um, because I have wasted a lot of time and, and money, you know, with people like that. Look at this. So, you, you got your degree in movie. <laughs> Listen, you need it, y'all. You need it. You need to keep your head on the swivel when you're dealing with foods. I love it. Shout out to that moochology. <laughs> I, I, listen, I think I got a doctorate in that because what happens is individuals will see things. Keep yeah. this in mind, too, y'all. Individuals will see what you have and assume that yes. you got a, a, an abundance of it. No, it's a thought process. I work for this and I manage my money so that I can have things to enjoy. I'm not just out frivolously doing this and watch this. If I can do it, you can too. Yes. But my work is not for you to benefit off of. So we need to watch out for that. And ladies and gentlemen, when we're talking about friends, the friends that you have, that the friends that you have and the friends that you need, you also have to be cognizant of the ones that you don't need. And those individuals can include blood. OK, yes. the funny thing is, and keep this in mind, I'm sure that there's individuals out there that have individuals in their family that if it wasn't blood connecting you together, you probably wouldn't be messing with them. OK, because they mind is out of line. OK, they don't understand your struggle and your muscle. OK. However, you still you still need to keep that type of boundary, yes. even with family. They may see you have all types of things or whatever that they want or they think that you have it and you have an abundance of. And so they will keep tugging and pulling. Oh, I know you got it. OK. So what? The, uh, is the answer still no? <laughs> you did what I'm saying? Or, or yeah. would you, do you have those type of friends, Camille? I, I do, friends and family. And I have to tell them, you know, just because you have it doesn't mean that you have it to give or to give to them or to that thing. You know what I mean? 
a lot of people, they, they see a lot of times people see what you have, but they don't see all the other stuff. You know, I'm saving for my kids, um, college funds. Yeah. I'm putting stuff in emergency funds, you know, yeah. retirement funds and all this kind of stuff because a lot of people, you know, money is just liquid to them. It just flows right through and out. There's no stoppage. There's no dams there to, you know, block some things from going through. Mm -hmm. So they just expect that because you have it, that you should just freely give it. And it's like, no, if I continue to give, then what do I have left? You know, I have nothing left to give you. Just like your emotional bank, if I keep giving you everything and I keep letting you, you know, manipulate and mooch and do all these types of things, then when I meet, then who's going to have to give to me? Nobody. Because if you're asking me, I know you don't have an emergency fund for me. You know what I mean? And that's what I'm saying. Yeah. <laughs> a lot of times, you know, I say, I used to say, you know, I feel like I'm saving money for friends and family, you know, rather than for me because I was giving out so much constantly um, that I had to finally put those boundaries and say, look, you know, enough is enough. I've given out months worth of salaries or years worth of salaries. I, I did. <laughs> Yeah. I did. I did. Mom, I'm going to tell you, I wrote a post and I said, the bank of Camille is closed. And so I wrote a whole post and I, mom, if I can be honest about this, I said, what bank can you go to take out a loan, no interest loan, not pay it back, then come back and ask again for another no interest loan, you know, and continue to do that. I was like, I never have to pay it back. The bank of Camille is, is closed. And so people can't do it. If you can't go to your own bank and borrow like that, what makes you think you could continue to come to me and borrow like that? I had to put down some boundaries. So love you, mom. Yeah. I had to put, it wasn't, it wasn't just her, but I'm just saying I had to put down some boundaries and you don't have to explain why no is a no, but you know how family is and it plays on your emotions and then they try to guilt trip you and all this yeah. kind of stuff. Yo, <laughs> if you really love me, yes. you will just go yes. ahead and do this. Yeah. I'm going to you tomorrow. Yep. And I said this to my sister yesterday, but I mean the other day, but I was like, why do we feel so guilty when we don't take care of other people or can't take care of other people, but we don't feel guilty when we don't take care of or can't take care of ourselves. Mm -hmm. Why don't mm -hmm. we have that same thing? No, because if I give this to you, then I'm unable to do the things that I need to do. So I need to not feel guilty about that. And yes, my no does not mean need an explanation. My no does not, you know, I shouldn't have to go and tell everybody why and give an account as to why I can't do it. My no should be no. But we know how emotions are. We know how our families are. We know how our friends are. Uh, but at this point, you just have to say, look, you know, I said what I said. The answer is no. Yeah. And you know yeah. what? This, this is the, the funny thing is, y'all. Um, <clears throat> so we've set up a family benevolence fund. OK. Uh -huh. Meaning. $250 a year. Uh-huh. Whoever take it, whatever. Whatever life is hitting you with, boom, uh -huh. if you got it, that's it. But listen, if it's gone in February, the bank is closed. You dig it? The yeah. fun thing with people is especially with family, and I'm not talking about mine specifically, I'm talking about general. Here we are in the military, right? But you don't stay in the military forever. First of all, if you think you're going to be rich coming into the military. Yeah, crazy is, yeah. is a cockroach because that's not true. So you have a certain budget, but then when you get ready to retire, now you, you don't have that money like you, you thought. But people still think, oh, look, you did 20 some years. You got that money. No, now it's cutting half. You know what I'm saying? So now I'm budgeting, budgeting. You see? Now, how do you think? You what you think you're going to get from half of half? Because listen, half of half and half of that ain't nothing. You <laughs> think my baby hungry and she's growing like a like a weed. You think? And my son's 16. So I got priorities. You feel me? And you ain't one of them right now. But watch this. I'm gonna love you tomorrow. Yes. And it's okay. Yeah, <laughs> no love lost. <laughs> Retirement is a real thing, ladies and gentlemen. And if I'm trying to set it up for mine. Why you ain't setting it up for, for yours? yours? Right. You feel me? Because uh, you not a a, a, a dependent. <laughs> so I'm not, don't depend. Oh, you got it. Don't depend on me. Okay. Yeah. What you think, Camille? Yeah. I mean, absolutely, absolutely, absolutely. I, it's not a whole lot more. I can. <laughs> you know I'm saying? Saying? People get lost in the sauce and they forget what what, what life is about. And real talk. Real talk, though, we all 
make choices. Yes. We, we do. We all make choices. And if I made a choice to put importance on how I um, maneuver with money, that's my choice. And then by the fruits of labor, it may seem to you that I have it all. No, I just like to live a certain way. Yes. You too can live a certain way, but you have to think a certain way. So, Seth, when we talk about that, I'm telling you what else I did. So, you know, like people, they always say, oh, I need this. I need this. And, I need this. and this is how you know we're your friends, right? Mm -hmm. You tell them you don't have it. Oh, I need it. I need it. I need it. You get, um, you know, something else. And they, oh, well, you could buy that, but you could help me out. <laughs> like, <laughs> that's not my, like, I don't know why that's my issue. That's, no. that's your, you know, I got the money to buy what I need. And so just and what, buy, I and what, what, what I want. What I want, right? Yeah. I might do too. <laughs> And that's my prerogative because I work for my money, right? But you'll see those ones that get mad at you and everything. But then you'd be like, okay, <laughs> you'd be like, okay, so um, is it a want or a need? Like, do you, oh, no, no, I need it. And I'm like, okay, why do you need it? Like, if you didn't have it today or tomorrow, then what would happen? And you start talking to it, oh, they got every excuse of why it's a need. You know, it's the number one. And you'd be like, mm, you really don't need that. You know what I mean? And then they'll get mad at you. But you know the ones that not need go, you know what, you're right. It was the ones that are really your friends and stuff. And they can take that criticism. They can take those no's and be like, no, you know what? You were right about that. I didn't really need it. It was something I really wanted or, you know, I I wanted it to go with this or whatever the case may be, mm -hmm. you know, but you're absolutely right. I could probably wait till next my next paycheck instead of going into debt owing somebody else to get it. But those other ones, and they, oh, she always buying this, always going on vacation. I had to stop posting stuff because I had friends that were asking me for stuff, not even family, friends. And was like, well, you can go all these places and you go on this trip and you can't give me a hundred dollars. Why is it my responsibility to give you a hundred dollars? Those are not my kids. First Those of are not all, my, everything I do is a plus for you, is not a requirement. It is hey, not a requirement for our friendship. Where you <laughs> at? No, not that. Well, I'm sorry, but at the same time, people, and I'm glad you said that too, because see, people would get social media totally misconstrued Man. on both ends okay yes. regardless of what i post you're looking at a snapshot of a moment you're not looking at the grind behind it on the flip side we right. may see a snapshot of someone else moment but we don't see the strife behind what's going on so social media creates a false narrative that individuals actually buy into like it's reality. Ladies and gentlemen, have you ever heard of the word, um, what is it, a reality show, reality TV? Do you, that's like an oxymoron, okay? It's no such thing as real TV. You feel me? It's a fake life, fake reality on TV. So it's being produced. And a lot of times certain social medias or individuals is given off a life that's not real. Okay. However, if a friend or if, if myself, if I'm posting something, yo, I just washed my car. Just washed it. I'm glad that I washed it. Now I got some well, a friend like, well, you got this new truck. Why can't you give me $35? First of all, no and no. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You, you got it mixed up. <laughs> yes. And that's how I was like, I can't even, you know, just even little stuff. I was like, I couldn't even do that. And, and they don't understand, especially us being in the military, too. You know, it comes after those seven, eight month deployments. It comes after, you know, living overseas away from your family for a long time. Those TDYs that you're literally up in 24 hours, you're gone. Working yeah. 14, 16, 18 hours a day in the maintenance career field. You know, going through all of these things and you need these vac vacations kind of decompress or whatever. And they also don't realize that when you live in Europe or in Japan or whatever, it's easier to travel, much cheaper over there. You know, we can go to those places that, you know, cost us $5,000 yes. from the States, but it may cost us $500 from over there. You know what I mean? Saying? That's what I got the problem. So. <laughs> we have to, <clears throat> I think in this life, I don't have the energy to explain to a fool why I have what I have. Let me tell you this. You don't have to. No, no, now I don't. But before yeah. I feel like if I was your friend, you needed right. that explanation. But in reality, you don't. See, that's why I, I, you know what? I think I'm starting to like the 40s because I can, I'm moving different. You feel me? Yeah. So here it is. Exactly. Right. So, so I got this X amount of money. And then I'm going to ask you, okay, so you want this money that I 
receive being in Afghanistan or, or Iraq with mortars. You want to try that? Go ahead. And let, would you do that? No. Let me enjoy this. Right. And, 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 and turn up on my dime. You dig it? Exactly. And now look, I might sprinkle some your way, but don't make it seem like I I'm owe you. Giving, and I owe you some, your friendship. Listen, yes. I almost had a moment. Your friendship, <laughs> our friendship does not mean you are entitled to the wow. fruit of my labor. You feel me? Because I'm not the type of friend that's going to ask you to share what you worked for. I'm the type of friend to say, hey, I like that. How did you? Yes. You feel me? That's the difference. Now, you got those friends, Camille? I do. And I'm, I'm, I have those friends that, you know, I invest in too. I'm that type of friend, but I have the friends that do the same thing for me, you know, like you or, you know, my other friend, she saw when I was going through Mandy, she, mm-hmm. she sent me random things, you know, mm-hmm. random flowers just to make my day or the people that want to build, you know what I mean? Or just say, look, I want to do this for you just because you've done so much for other people. It may not be for them, but they just want to do the, and I'm the same way for them. And then I'm that type of friend too. I'm like, nope, tell me how much it costs. I'm not looking for hookup. You know, I want to invest in you the way that you've invested in me or invest in, you know, you the way that I would be paying full price at another place. So why can't I do that for you? You know, and so I try to um, be the friend that I would want in my in my circle. And I have those friends in my circle, fortunately for me. You know what I'm saying? And that's because I had to cut out a lot of those other types of friends. Mm -hmm. You know, the toxic, that is a toxic relationship. Like you said, give, give, give that negativity all the time, the competing, the heaviness, the complaining, all that. I had, my life is too short, you know? And at this point in my life, I'm like, I've worked too hard for the things that I have. I don't have to explain why, if you don't get it, you know, if you want to know, ask me, if you don't get it, then maybe you're not there yet. You know, I kind of try to throw some nuggets or whatever, but at the same time, I need people that are kind of going in the same direction. Oh, that I'm going in. I and, love that. Um, so I, I, I love that. Yeah, so I just I have to I've been very selective, and it's not that I'm like we ain't friends no more. I it's not that kind of thing, you know what I mean? But you just know where to place them, and you kind of start looking, and you start really opening your eyes to what kind of friends you have and who yeah. they are. What are the like, type of friends you need? What type you need? Like Tiva is on here. Tiva was my uh, very first roommate at my first base um, at Barksdale, mm-hmm. and I got pregnant very young. And she helped me through my entire pregnancy being by myself. Her and I have been friends for years. She has her businesses. She'll gift me something. I'll pay for something. And the opposite. She's always, hey, I'm thinking about you. Here's this. Those are the types of friends that I need in my life. Not fair weather friends, not foul weather friends, but those ones that's going to be there to the end. Those must have tried and true, you know, friends who just want to see people succeed Mm -hmm. and do well because that's that's just who they are. Yeah. And so I look for those wholesome friends, those ones with a good heart, kind heart that are forward thinking, that, you know, have a, a different level of awareness than what we grew up in, that are trying to do and, and to, to be and to to build and bring others along with them. And right. so I just realized I don't have time for a lot of riffraff. And so I don't entertain it much anymore. I get you. I have a f- couple of them, but there are some friends in here that I just, you know, I, I've been blessed to have some amazing friends. And mm-hmm. I have more than one, two, three, four, five. Mm-hmm. And I know that I am extremely abundantly blessed because of mm-hmm. that. So, and, so, and, and that, that's good. It, it is a blessing. And uh, But shout out to everyone that's watching right now. I want to go through these comments before I get into your, your beautiful jewelry. Uh, but so, you know, we have this comment here and it, it makes sense, right? Some people aren't, uh, they're, they're cool with not having, you know, any new friends, right? And because it takes energy for some, but I'll tell you one thing, a good friend is seamless, it's effortless. Yes. You get what I'm saying? You don't really have to work at it. So shout out to you though, ma'am. And Corey says, okay, my folks think I'm rich because <laughs> I was mail to whip, mail to mail. Yeah, because you are rich. Yeah, but, I was just about to say that you are. Yeah, mail to you are. Stop fronting. And you don't <laughs> take anything. But with that being said, individuals, we should not have to dumb down our life just to make someone else feel better or to make them feel included. So like you said earlier, maybe we just need to upgrade our friends list. 
not in bulk, not in quantity, but quality, right? Because if if I'm doing this with my life, yo, I want to celebrate it and, and talk to other people that can resonate. So like even when I went back home a couple of years after being in the military and I deployed like twice, I could not talk to my friends about what I saw in Egypt. Right. I feel like I couldn't. I couldn't talk to my friends about the things that I've seen overseas in different languages and different peoples. I felt like I couldn't because the most that we could talk about was what happened in high school. You see what I'm saying? So I really had to uh, understand how friendship works. And we sometimes put a lot of stress on what friendship should be. And what, which, which is not necessarily the case, right? As you grow, some friends can't go. Yes, absolutely. We about to talk about that in a minute. Exactly. Go ahead, go ahead, Camille. Let's talk about that. Yeah, is it, I was it, about it, to say that. What they say? I don't know if it's a uh, who is it? Jim Brown, Zig Ziglar, somebody. You're the average of the five friends that you know yes. you're around or whatever. And that's true. You know, some friends when you're moving, they can't go with you. Yeah. Um, and there's you just outgrow certain people, just like you can outgrow an organization and you can outgrow, you know, a certain group of people or, mm -hmm. or whatever it is. And I, I, I learned that I don't want to be stuck in the same place where I was. You know, I, I, I have this this new uh, I don't want to call it awakening or whatever, where I'm like, I see the possibilities, the potential. And I'm trying to surround myself with people who also see that and are trying to go in that direction. I don't right. want it holding me back. I've been here for 40 something years. You know, I'm I'm trying to go to a new level and right. it's not a new level leaving anybody else. It's a, it's really about thinking, That's you know, it. my That's awareness, about mm -hmm. what I can create for myself, my life to look like despite whatever circumstance that I've had in my, you know, that's why those friends too that want to keep you back. Oh, I remember you back when. I remember, I don't care. I remember me back when too, but look at me now. You know what I'm saying? Like I am not the same person that I was five years ago or 10 mm -hmm. years ago or whatever. And I'm not going to let you hold me back there. So say what you want to, but who I am now is who I am today. You know what I'm saying? And I need people who are not stuck in that crab in the barrel mentality um, that are looking for a way to do better. To, to be more, to do. And so I've had to cut those people that have limited thinking, who are stifled in their thinking and don't want to grow. I've had to um, change their position in my friend. You know, my friend, hi hierarchy of friends. That's what yeah. you call it. <laughs> hierarchy of friends. Hierarchy of friendship, yeah. Yeah, so I've had to change positions because I need to surround my pe myself with people who are going in the same direction that I'm going, which is up. You know, which is being better. And it's not better than other people just to be better than other people, yeah. but a better version of myself I'm and, and myself, not yeah. my purpose and what God has for me and how he created me. I'm sure he didn't want me to live in poverty my whole life. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I just I just don't I, I don't get that. So I'm trying to surround myself with people who are, who are doing more. So, yes, a lot of people cannot go with you. They're not ready to. They're not right. mature enough to. They haven't made the decision to, you mm -hmm. know, that they want to do more. And some people are just comfortable being mediocre comfortable being average and that's okay for them. You know what I mean? I just don't want to be there. I don't want to be there. And it's not a, sh a shout out to them. It's not a diss or anything like that. It's just that you have to know where to put people in your life, you know? And so I want people with me closest to me that are moving up. So mm -hmm. if you want to come on, you know, jump on the bandwagon and come on. But, you know, until then, I just, I don't have space. A space for people who want to. And that's it. Mm -hmm. So, yep. So, what, what about you? Um, no, no, no. So, you know, it, it's almost like when we evolve mentally, everything around us change, and also our friends, right? Mm -hmm. And it's good when they can come with you, but we have to understand when the season has changed. Sometimes their positions change too. Absolutely. And so we have to be okay with that and not, you know, don't curse time. Don't curse. Well, nah, man, I hate getting old and, and, and all this stuff, the stuff because it feels as though we can't hang out the way we used to. But think about this you're hanging out differently. So be glad that you're evolving and be glad to evolve with individuals that can evolve with you. You get what I'm saying? That is the best thing that I love about my boy Eric is because we, I, listen, we went through some 
mass in Detroit. And I mean, have fun every step of the way. And I mean, crazy. And that's as much as I'm gonna say on that. However, when we went through life having children at the same time, like, whoa, experiencing this military stuff at the same time, different relationships and like, wow, you know, as you evolve, then other people that can evolve with you, it's just, it's a very, very dope experience. And then now you can see what life is truly meant to be. And not just that, you can see, the individuals that God put into your life, because I feel as though you're not able, you cannot do this by yourself. You nope. can't do this by yourself and you're not meant to do this by yourself. But <clears throat> going on to you, Camille, what you got? All right. So um, I just want to give a shout out right now to uh, Zoe's Bling Boutique. Uh, my friend Holly Williamson is a paparazzi consultant. We call her the jewelry queen. So like these wonderful little acrylic earrings that I have, my bling bracelets, things like that. So if you like my jewelry every week that I have on here, check her out. Zoe's BB at gmail.com, www.paparazziacc. And it is Holly Williamson. And um, she got everything, y'all. She always gets the good good. So if y'all want to be fly every occasion, check her out. Check her out. <laughs> Yo, dope. So, fellas. Sorry, I don't got no no jewelry for y'all, but I got this Fitbit. What y'all know about the Fitbit? Listen, let, our goal today is to try to get 10,000 steps before noon, wherever you at. You understand what I'm saying? Hashtag, hashtag 10,000 steps, okay? And let's get that in. But anyway, <clears throat> what else you got, Camille? So um, I just wanted to uh, actually, um, <laughs> yeah, excuse me for one moment. I'm Please. sorry. <laughs> okay, so let's <laughs> look. Camille got to get her stuff together because of her nose. What I want to say though, before she gets back, is we want to thank everybody for being on. Let us know if you're enjoying what we're offering you, and if there's anything else that you would like us to talk about and 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 help explain. Let us do that. And this is no stress. And when we call it the sanity check, you never know what you're going through, and sometimes you're battling. And asking yourself, hold on, does this make sense? Did this person just say that? And am I tripping? Chances are you're not tripping, right? So that's what we're here to do. And then you may just be tripping, but you're we, we're able to give you another way to think about it. That's it, right? Just another way to think about it. Oh, you back, Camille. I'm back, you guys. Thank you, you very much. Straight. I'm patient. I'm straight. <laughs> okay, ladies and gentlemen, her nose was running. She didn't want to be live with, with the boogers hanging, but it's okay. Go ahead. What you got? So I was just going to say, you know, it is important. I think like friends, you know, just kind of talking about this, making sure that we, we properly categorize people. It will save us a lot of headache and heartache, um, by doing that, knowing where people fit in and knowing where you fit in, having those conversations sometimes, uh, you know, some people have to ask, you know, am I your best friend or are you my best friend or can you be my best friend or whatever? And that's, it sounds kind of, um, um, what's the word juvenile, mm -hmm. but it's necessary sometimes yes. because you'll put yourself somewhere in someone's life that you don't fit in for them. And it causes heartache and headache and it doesn't have to. You know, it does not have to, but being clear and not trying to make everybody your best friend will also save you a lot of heartache and headache. Everybody shouldn't be your best friend. You know, some people are just casual acquaintances. Some of them are intimate friendships. Um, and that does not mean sexual or anything like that, but you have a more of an intimate relationship with them. Some people are very close friends and some people you see at a game and, you know, keep it moving. But making sure that you create those boundaries and that you, um, you know, talk about those those things um, that friends should talk about. It's just like Seth said earlier, a relationship. And with relationships, you have to communicate, you know, where you are. And then if you're moving in a di different direction, sometimes you have to give people the opportunity, say, hey, this is where I'm going. You know, I'm going this way. Are you coming? And if you're not, then, you know, this is what I'm going to be doing. If you catch up, then that's fine. I'm still here. There's no love lost. But at this point right now, I have to continue moving. I can't yeah. have anybody keep holding me back. And yeah. I've had that conversation as well mm -hmm. with some people. This is the direction I'm going. If you're not coming, then I, I'm not going backwards for you. And you know, awareness thing, you know, it is self -awareness it's self awareness because not everybody is built for your energy. Listen, ladies yeah. and gentlemen, if you consider yourself 
a friend of mine, you knew that I am all the way 100. I wait, listen, I wake up on 100 already. So if I'm calling you, you know it's about to be something popping. Real talk. Not everybody can look, see, but look, not everybody can take that energy. And I've had individuals say, yo, you're kind of intense for me. But for me, that's how I wake up, bro. Hey, life is intense. You get what I'm saying? You got to be ready to hustle. But not everybody can do that and can take that. They can still be a good friend, but it's good to have an opposite friend. And that is an individual like my boy, Larry. And look, we're both Aries, okay? But some people think just because you have the same zodiac sign, you're going to have the same uh, type of energy but we're polar opposites, but we get each other. But I do want to touch on this real quick. She says, how does traveling and experiencing other countries and cultures impact your life or thought process? Well, you said it right then and there. We, When you get outside, let me tell you something. Yes. When, when you get outside of Detroit, the listen, when you get the outside East. of the east side of Detroit, Michigan. Hold on, Seth. It's mm. so cold in the deep. No, no, no. Hold on. Wait, let me take her out of this, okay? Because, look, she had a line for that. I'm not <laughs> putting nothing on It's So Cold in the Deep. I don't even know where that song came from. We're going to leave it alone. <laughs> yes, about that. Look, with that being said, think about it, though. When you get out of one situation, environment, and you go into a total different environment, not only will your mind expand, but your friends will expand because now you are seeing something so different, but still familiar. And now you're able to connect in a different level, right? So I love music. So I've been DJing for quite a long time, but it's almost like mixing music that you're used to with the same beat per minute, but taking music from a different culture, different genre and mixing it in to making a whole different sound. And by traveling outside of your norm and outside of your family or just a regular group of friends, that's how you can make new music, if that makes sense. Camille, what you think? Absolutely. Traveling the experience culturally has been uh, amazing. I, I always say I'm glad my kids had the opportunity to live in different com- com- countries as well because it gave them a different appreciation of life. Yeah. It let them see firsthand that what you see on TV is a very small part of what a culture actually is or a country looks like or any of those types of things. Mm -hmm. And it gave them a they are very um, open. Uh, They are very uh, diverse. They have an appreciation for foods, for music, for language. And it's not that, you know, sometimes as Americans, we get over there and everything is about us. You know, why can't they speak English? Why can't they? No, this is their country. And it's up to us to try to learn to speak their language or to connect on a different level. You know, you see poverty in different stages and different levels. You see... um, uh, uh, what do you call it? Rich, you know, in different stages and it, wealth in different stages is what I'm trying to say. You see that Africa is so much more than feed the children. You know what I mean? And that Europe is more than just the Eiffel Tower. Um, you see history, You see, and there's such an appreciation, a depth of what people had to go through, what they still go through, um, the times that we live in, different technologies that, you know, America, we think we're up here, but if you live in Japan, you know that we're 15 years behind in America right now than Japanese, uh, you know, technology. And so it puts into perspective kind of where you really are. That's right. You know what I'm saying? And so you don't have this superiority complex, if you, if you know what I mean. And so that we can connect to people with from all different countries. All can, I mean, I have Turkish friends that used to you know invite us over, people from Morocco, all these different things. Come have food. Don't worry about no forks and stuff. How, how do y'all eat? If you eat with your hands, I'm eating with my hands too. And so it just... It, it, it connects you on a basic human level. Mm-hmm. If you have the mm-hmm. opportunity to travel and to be around people, local people, not just do the touristy stuff, but really get a chance to get to know the people, I encourage you to do it because your outlook on life, on the world, on cultures will be totally 
changed. Yes, it will. All those ideas will be Mm -hmm. shattered. Everything that you thought you knew will completely be wrecked. You're absolutely right. We have to be willing to, first of all, and since we're talking about friends, ladies and gentlemen, we're talking about friends, how many of us have them, good friends to have and ones not to have that you shouldn't have. But then we, we see that we're talking about also getting outside of our environments and going abroad, going overseas. And so that can help you to connect with other people and to see exactly what type of friend are you. Yes. Meaning, do you have a limited view of life? So your view of life is actually the way you may shape the type of person that you allow in your life. So I encourage you to think about being cultured is more than just visiting people and visit, I'm sorry, visiting places. It's engulfing in the culture. You, you, you get what I'm saying? For example, like you gave a, a great, a great analogy about Africa. Right. What if you were to go to Africa to see mansions that you've never seen before, but in your mind, you're thinking it's just flies and huts. That's out of line, but that's how we think. Or you go to Europe thinking it's some glamorous place, but it got a ghetto like Detroit. You get what I'm saying? So you can still connect, but you can connect on a different way in a different, you know, in a, in a different point of view, but we have to be willing to expand our mind to accept better friends. You, you, you get what I'm saying? Because just because you know one thing does not mean that you know all things. Absolutely. Absolutely. Right. Absolutely. Anyway, speaking about abroad and yes. overseas, what you got? So um, I just want to bring up Salama International. We have a lot of um, people here from Salama, excuse me, and it is a um, a uh, organization. It's a nonprofit organization that uh, my mother, Jackie Dozier, has started in uh, 2017, 2018. It got revamped in April 2020. And um, really, there are some initiatives in helping to expand businesses, uh, to bring business to some of the the countries, Kenya, especially Kenya, um, Uganda. uh, She's going to be starting doing some work, Nigeria and Senegal, but um, expanding, doing stuff like fish farms, you know, the whole teach a man to fish, you know, feed him for a lifetime to give a man a fish. He eats for a day, teach a man to fish. He eats for a lifetime. Um, And so they're uh, really starting businesses. So they've started now, it's been like 16, I think, different businesses from corn farms to sugarcane farms, uh, fish farms, chicken farms, uh, cereal. They have ladies who make cereal, tailors and all that. So giving them the skills to really learn how to uh, create businesses, create wealth on their own to continue to feed their families for generations to come in some of the areas that um, don't have, you know, all the technology or all the things like that. But when I say these folks are working, 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 they are. So here uh, on the sanity check, uh, what we've decided to do is to uh, adopt a different organization uh, every now and then we'll we'll kind of put out the details a little bit, but, um, and kind of fundraise for them um, and help to, to do something outside of ourselves, to show other people that, you know, we care and that um, we want to help them to be able to build and and create and and provide for their families. So Salama International is the, the organization that we've chosen for this month. So if you would like to donate, thank you. If you would like to donate, uh, you could donate by Cash App at Sanity Checks and it's at sign Sanity Checks C-H-E-C-K-K-S. That's for Camilla Seth, if you didn't know. <laughs> but at Sanity Checks, you can also do um, at Sanity Checks on Venmo and then also Sanity Checks at IgnitedMindsInc.com uh, through PayPal. So you have those three payment options. There they are right there. If you guys would love to, to donate. Uh, we have some pictures and stuff over the next couple of weeks. We'll, we'll put up some pictures and a video and everything to see the work that has been done. But if you guys would like to donate uh, to this organization, um, everything is a nonprofit. Again, uh, all of your donations are um, are uh, taxes. What is the word? Um yeah, it's, uh, yeah, it's taxes. Yeah, yeah. 
they can the, 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 uh, yeah, tax um, write off. Yes, mm-hmm. charitable don- donation. So you can get a receipt for that. Um, all of it will be um will be um you know accounted for. Y'all please excuse me right now. I'm trying to trying to hold some things in and then also get some things out. So but everything will be accounted for. Um so if you guys would like to donate please it's Salama International again at Sanity Checks on uh, Venmo on Cash App or Sanity Checks at Ignited Minds Inc. um dot com. So yeah. um thank you guys uh, for that too. Yes. And so so ladies and gentlemen again we're going to put more information out there, but it is so, so important that we give back and we also give to those that are giving. You, you get what I'm saying? It's not a, a charity, if that makes sense. It's not. What we're helping to do is enable individuals outside of our circle, right, to help them to grow their community. And because we're trying to do that with the sanity check within this community. So we're going to post more about that. And we will love y'all to donate what you can. Whatever you can do is good. It's no obligation. All right. But again, we want to thank you all for tuning in. Us talking about brands and everything. We might have to do a part two to this because what we need to talk about really is the effects of having those type of toxic friends. What it can do to you in your sanity and tailor that up, tie that up with your security, okay? Because if your friends are making you feel a certain way, it may not necessarily be your friends doing it. You are placing yourself in that situation that's adding on to your own insecurity. So we can talk about that next week. What y'all think? Y'all, y'all can dig that. Come in. what you think? You think we can, we can do that? I think we can do that. Let us know if you guys want to give us some thumbs up or some hearts. Yeah. Um, and also know that if you guys have a topic that you want to talk about, like Seth said earlier, you can just reach out to us and let us know and uh, we'll address some of those things. So, yes. Yeah. So we're getting ready to go. Y'all, we, we got to let Camille get her nose situated <laughs> and I got to get, uh, get, get, get ready. But you guys have a great, great, great weekend. Stay sane. All right. And if not, come back next week and we'll check you on and make sure that you you ain't lose it all. But we love you all and we will see y'all soon. All right. Take care. Thank you. Later.